Now our top focus on Vyond polls are underway in Nepal amid growing political instability. Close to 18 million people are eligible to vote in seven provinces across the Himalayan nation. Analysts are predicting a hung parliament and more instability in the country. Nepali Congress-led ruling coalition is expected to win the elections by a narrow margin. The country is in need of some political stability. No prime minister has served a full term since the end of the civil war in 2006. The frequent change in governments and infighting among parties have slowed down the country's economy. The two major alliances in today's polls are the Nepali Congress-led Democratic and Leftist Alliance and the CPN-UML-led Leftist and Pro-Hindu Pro-Monarchy Alliance. The next government will face a plethora of issues. These include maintaining a stable political administration, reviving the tourism industry and balancing ties with neighboring countries, China and India. Nepal will elect its 275 members of the federal parliament. 165 of them will be elected through direct voting and remaining 110 will be elected through proportional representation system. Similarly, they will elect 550 members of the provincial assembly, 330 of them will be elected directly and remaining 220 will be elected through proportional method. Vote counting will begin shortly after polls close, however the result could take several days to come. Nepal's election commission has mobilized over 270,000 staff for conducting the elections. Over 300,000 security personnel have also been deployed. Security has been bolstered in all 77 districts across the country. Authorities have also implemented air patrolling and closed international borders for about 72 hours. <laughs> Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Nepal correspondent Saloni Murarka. Welcome to the broadcast, Saloni. You are on the streets of Kathmandu. What are you hearing from the voters? Our voters, especially if I uh, tell you about the young voters, they are pretty much, if I just try to sum up, is that they are angry actually with the politicians and with their repetitive uh, faces coming and forming the government. And um, while I was just speaking to a, a younger uh, man here where he says that we do not want a country like a Europe or a big country. All we want is a stable government and economic revolution. So we see that the voters uh, are only wishing for some political, uh, political stability while also choosing for independent candidates. There's a lot of support that is being, uh, you know, being garnered for the independent candidates because uh, they feel that uh, the old faces are coming up with their repetitive promises. If we, even if you look at this, uh, when in 2008, when the monarchy was abolished, these same leaders had made some collective promises of a stable government, of economic prosperity, and also corruption-free country. And these same promises are again being made after after how 15 years now. So you can see what the situation exactly is, and voters are frustrated, to be honest, and. Uh, they would like to see a change and for what they are, they are, they are here to vote. Now, fair concern by especially the younger voters, we just want a stable government, they say. Now, but on the ground, no prime minister has served his full term since 2006. How is Nepal's future looking this time, Saloni? Well, uh, if I see that, it's not very positive uh, because uh, many experts have said that there will be another hung parliament and that too, within six months, they have predicted that the government will not even last for another year. So uh, this uh, situation is nothing new for the country, but of course very sad at the same time. And uh, voters here want to see a change and uh, including if I just, uh, there are many uh, age group voters, if I say they feel a significant lack of connect between the political parties and uh, the voting population and they see that they feel that um, there's a you know a critical uh, lack of uh, work that is being done by the government so um, this political instability um, for per se if i look at the experts views and all um, this go this election will not um, give for sure give a stable government and it look the political instability just because it comes down to a coalition government and because the like uh, Nepali Congress with the Maoists, both of the parties have different ideologies, but still they have formed a government together. So uh, for long run, and if you say, they, they, of course, they, uh, the, both the parties are going to be standing at odds with each other, including with the neighbors that it comes with India and China, and now US potentially entering the fray after the NCC ratification. 
So uh, the foreign policy, if we look at majorly, major of the parties are on the same page, more or less. But domestically, there are a lot of rifts and odds that we'll see in uh, the coming government. Right now, Nepal's parliament works a little different than other countries. There are about 275 members in the federal parliament, but not all spots have the same electoral system. Can you explain this distinction? Yes, uh, you are right. Nepal does follow a mixed electoral system. Uh, this federal parliament, which is a 275 member house, of which uh, 165 will be elected through FPTP, that is first pass the post system and the rest 110 will be elected through PR, that is proportional representation. So, uh, and the same goes for the uh, provincial assemblies. So, the voters here will stamp on four ballots and um, one each for the uh, FPTP candidates for central and the provincial and one each for the parties at the central and the provincial. So, uh, FPTP is directly electing a, a candidate while uh, PR is like a, a, the amount of votes that a party garners will determine the seats that it gets in the parliament or in the state assembly. All right. Thank you for all those updates. That was Saloni Murarkar, Nepal correspondent, reporting from Kathmandu.